What's going on, heavy heads? Welcome back to the channel. As always, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, once again, counting down my top 50 of 2020. This is full length albums, EPs, live performances, and more. Let me know in the comments uh, what releases are you looking forward to in 2021. One last thing subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Hook up with me on Twitter and Instagram. Let's get heavy. <laughs> up on the list at number 30 is the band werewolves uh, i saw the artwork it was uh suggested on youtube i believe um loved the the cover art but i did think that this was actually going to be power metal uh, but i clicked on it just to see um and i was dead ass wrong this is a blackened death grind band did a little bit of research uh it's members of berserker and dave haley of psychroptic um, and I mentioned Dave uh, specifically because he's also going to come up uh, in another band later on in the list uh, just because he is an absolute powerhouse. So musically, the album uh, is very much what you might expect with Death Grind, except it's got that blackened uh, touch to it. So it's got a lot more atmosphere than what you might be uh, used to when it comes to grind itself. Vocals on the album range from some very low, uh, sludgy, thick lows to uh, kind of that mid that has plenty of venom uh, rasp to it. Um, I really like the vocals overall, and there is some sections of just really nice delivery of the lyrics, the flow overall. I really liked. Uh, the only thing is that I wish that the vocals had been a little bit more upfront. Musically, this is just a barrage of trim picking and blast beats and riffs a la Dying Fetus or Blood Red Throne. Uh, absolutely killer stuff. It doesn't let up one bit. There's no fucking around on this album. So check it out. Next up at 29 is the band Venom Prison with their release Primeval. Uh, this is not actually a new release, but a re-recording. Uh, they actually took two of their EPs, The Primal Chaos and Defy the Tyrant, and re-recorded them, uh, and then added a couple of new songs. Now, the uh, Primal Chaos EP, I don't remember it being that bad overall, but Defy the Tyrant was uh, kind, of an, kind of an unpleasant uh, listen. So, overall, this does feel like a new release, um, because I can really enjoy this music more now. I think most Venom Prison fans are pretty excited about this like I am. The uh, lead singer Larissa Stuper's vocals, she's got like this this hatred, this uh, absolute disgust for the humankind in her vocals. It's just this tone that she has and I think it works just so perfectly for death metal in general. So like I said, there are a couple of new tracks, uh, Defiant to the Will of God and Slayer of Holoferns, uh, both absolute rippers. They really sound like uh, overall just a continuation of their previous full length, uh, Samsara. And before we move on, I must mention, uh, actually they did a live session for Audio Tree. If you enjoy the band and you haven't checked it out, do so. This is another band that I really look forward to seeing what they're going to do next. Uh, every time they put something out, it's next level. Next up on the list is the band Carnation with Where Death Lies. This is a band from Belgium. Uh, this is their sophomore release. I believe it was Chapel of Abhorrence uh, was their previous album that came out in 2018, I believe. A uh, good album, but this album really is next level. Now, if I had to put them in a, a tight genre, I guess I would just say this is modern death metal but uh overall they do remind me quite a bit of bands like uh entombed um bolt thrower uh maybe bloodbath as well um and they actually do have some of that very aggressive thrash a la like goat whore as well 
Um, one of the other things I really like about this band overall is the lead singer really has just a very powerful voice. Uh, at times he very much reminds me of like Corpse Grinder uh, of Cannibal Corpse. Um, just a very sort of, you know, from the depths of hell sort of vocal. So unlike a lot of the stuff that I listen to that uh, is just as, you know, let's get that BPM just as high as we can go. Uh, this is not quite as fast as a freight train. Uh, this is more of like a steamroller, uh, super heavy. Uh, don't expect any ridiculous breakdowns or uh, over the top uh, technicality overall. Uh, this is pretty much a straightforward death metal band. I really enjoyed this album. Next up is the band Cult of Lilith, Mara, uh, their full-length album. I did a reaction video for Purple Tide. I fucking loved it. Cult of Lilith is very much an experimental band. Uh, you've get, you get tech, you get prog, it's even genty at times. Vocally, it varies from every range of lows and mids to some gorgeous cleans, uh, a la... Opeth or even Luna's Call, uh, which I discussed um, in one of the prior videos. This album at times reminds me of bands like Rivers of Nile um, and other times I really think of like that infectious sort of groove tech that you get from bands like Gorod. Because this is so experimental, it at times can feel a little bit spastic on that first listen, but I will tell you what, it's very much a controlled chaos, and it won't take you too long to grasp what's happening. I would have to call this overall a very intelligent metal. So check it out, Brainiacs. <laughs> on the list is the gloriously thrashy V or 5 by Havoc. This album feels like a, a ode to Injustice for All from Metallica. You're going to notice that pretty early on. And of course, uh, like a lot of thrash, uh, you're really getting into politics, um, automation, war, things of that nature, and that's that's kind of been that way forever with thrash. And there is some nice bass work. I do really enjoy the vocals, but overall, this is all about thrashy guitar. If you love yourself some thrashy guitar, you've got to give this a listen. Check it out. Let me know what you think. <laughs> is the symphonic death metal masters from Greece, Septic Flesh with their album Infernus uh, Sinfonica. Now this is, uh, I believe, the, the actual video for this was shot in 2019, but it's a, a concert performance with a full orchestra, the Toluca Philharmonica Orchestra in Mexico. Uh, I did not have that memorized, uh, but I will tell you what, this is one of the best live performances you are going to see. If you are a fan of Septic Flesh and you've not seen it, uh, you are going to love it. And if you are not a fan of Sim uh, Septic Flesh, well, then you are missing out. It comes in audio and video formats, uh, and I just, I cannot say enough about how good the live performances are. The vocals, every single instrument in this orchestra, everything sounds so good. It's quite unbelievable, really. Seriously though, if you are a fan of Septic Flesh and you have not seen this, get off of my channel right now and go watch it. At number 24 is the Swedish death metal band Leek with their full-length misanthropic breed. Now, like a lot of Swedish death metal bands before them, uh, like Bloodbath, uh, there is uh, actually quite a bit of melody in the guitar work itself. Don't get me wrong, it's heavy, but again, a lot of nice melodic guitar work throughout. One thing in particular that I like about the album overall is it has this sort of sense of impending doom. Uh, much like if you were to look at the cover art, uh, this impending doom is coming to rip your innards out of your anus. 
If you had watched any of my earlier videos breaking down my top 50, you might remember the band Undeath with their full-length lesions of a different kind and the uh, Plague album that I mentioned, Portraits of a Mind. Uh, I think if you really like those releases, you're going to enjoy this as well, as well as if you are a fan of Bloodbath or even uh, maybe less or so at the gates. Very straightforward metal, but also very memorable. Uh, there's a lot of good hook, a lot of groove in this album. Check this shit out. <laughs> Next up on the list is another one of my favorite bands. This is a brutal technical death metal band, Serox, with their EP, Vore. I can keep this one pretty simple. It's brutal, it's technical, it's death metal, it's a little bit grindy. They throw in just a pinch of melody every now and then, a little bit of instrumental to give you just a little bit of time to breathe. But if you like your music heavy and you are not familiar with Serox, do yourself a favor. Go back, check out the reaction video I did for Building a Shrine Upon Vanishing Sands. That was one of my absolute favorite songs for the entire year. This EP also includes a couple of demos that are simply the instrumentals, which are kind of nice to listen to. You get a real appreciation for the technical skill that it requires to play these songs. Next up is a band that I actually did a reaction video for. This is Abromelin with their full length release, Never Enough Snuff. This is a band that has been around for a very long time, but they hadn't released anything in quite some time. Now, I had mentioned Dave Haley before, drummer for Psychroptic, and well, here he is again in Abromelin. Uh, there's a very good chance if you find yourself some amazing death metal from Australia, Dave is involved. I would definitely say this is one of the scariest uh, albums I saw all 2020. Uh, there is just an absolute sense of dread in this album. Uh, just unrelenting, just punishing death metal. I absolutely dig it. There are insane guitar solos on this. The drums are incredible. The vocalist has some of the most blood-curdling uh, vocals uh, that I've ever heard. I think I referred to the uh, lead singer in my last reaction as a uh, singing zombie, uh, but that's really how nasty his vocals are. This was one of the best surprises I got all year. Last up on the list today at number 21 is the band Goratory with their full length Sour Grapes. This is one of the most frantic, uh, off the wall releases I heard all year. This is brutal death grind. This is absolutely as heavy as it gets. Much like the album art itself, uh, you know, the album kind of sounds like an LSD trip gone wrong, uh, except I absolutely dig it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this release. There you go, guys. Another 10 down. Let me know in the comments what did you think of my picks for the year. Uh, let me know what were your picks as well. What do I need to go back and check out? Also, let me know what you're looking forward to in 2021. I'll be making a video very shortly on the albums I'm looking forward to uh, this year, but I would love to also hear from you guys. What do you want to hear? What do you want to see? Until next time, keep it heavy.